welcome to this edition of the Laurel Fire Watch. I'm your co-host Richard Blankenship. I'm here today with my co-host Dan Sheffield as well. And we have some special guests with us today. We're going to talk today about membership, types of membership. And we have two special people here today. One is Dan Greenstein. Dan is the membership chairperson for the Laurel Volunteer Fire Department. And then we have Maya McConnell who is a special guest that come with us today. Uh, Maya was a, a former member here. Um, we want to ask her some questions. Uh, one thing about Maya is that uh, when I was chief, uh, I appointed her uh, the first time as a sergeant, um, and Maya did an outstanding job for me when she was there. She was also a uh, membership chairman in, in the department. Uh, recently, within the last year, um, Maya got promoted to battalion chief in the Baltimore City Fire Department. And it's good for this organization, it makes us all proud here that she was the first female battalion chief in the history of Baltimore City Fire Department to be involved in operations of the department. And we're glad to have her here today and talk to her a little bit about how she got started. Dan, we're going to start off with you. Uh, I know my co-host over there has got some questions he wants to ask you about membership. Uh, we know membership is important. We got to have people here to get the apparatus out and get certain things done. And I know we have a, a bunch of different types of membership. And Dan's going to ask some questions about that. Thanks, Cap. Dan, you're a life member here at the fire department. Can you share with me your incentive to being involved with the Laurel Fire Department? Okay. Um, well, first of all, thank you for having me back. I don't know if you all remember me out in TV land, but I was the um, co-host of the show about when it first started. Um, I've always been interested in the fire service, and um, back in 1988, I joined the rescue squad. But then I realized I wanted to ride, ride an engine, but I also liked the ambulance, so I made an arrangement with the chief at the time. I could go to another station, ride the ambulance, and join here to ride an engine. Very good. How has being a member of the Loyal Fire Department impacted your life? What does it mean to you? Well, I've made a lot of friends. Um, Back when I was a little bit younger, I made sure I was here every day, even if I moved to Baltimore, put a lot of miles on my car. Um, it was something I wanted to do. It's like, it's a social event, but it's all social um, support system, but it's also um, serving the community. Thanks, Dan. You've achieved your life membership here at the Laurel Volunteer Fire Department. What does that mean to you? Well, it means that um, if I want to, I... All I have to do is come here and drink coffee and can still enjoy all the um, benefits. But seriously, um, I mean, I enjoy coming here and want to contribute. So um, obviously, even though I don't have to do anything more, um, and basically I can just come here, watch TV, and um, drink coffee, I can still continue to participate and um, do as much as I can. Even though when you get older, it's a little harder to do stuff because... Um, People don't realize that um, if you're into extreme sports, firefighting is close to being an extreme sport. Except the difference between sports and firefighting is in firefighting you don't have a chance to warm up. You just have to be ready to go immediately. Dan is just when he says he just comes up here and drinks coffee. He's actually one of the most valued members that we have on Saturday night, often performing primary patient care duties uh, with our duty crew and assisting greatly with our training efforts. Thanks, Dan. One of the committees that you're involved with is our membership recruiting. What do you think attracts people to want to join us here at the Laurel Fire Department? Well, most of the, a lot of people want to join because they want to serve the community. Um, other people, um, I'm not quite sure why they want to join. They get here. They, um, the way we do it is we have them come down and we explain the um, um, what's involved in being a volunteer. That scares off maybe half the people because there is a very, very big time commitment, at least on the front end. Um, once um, you get become a member, you have to take volunteer recruit school, which is 32 hours. Then um, you have to take, within the first two and a half years, you have to take EMT, which is probably around 200 hours, and Firefighter 1, which is 108 hours. In addition to doing um, duty crews, um, doing standbys, coming to meetings, and running calls. So um, once um, people hear all that, the people that are really committed, that are want to serve the community, and um, possibly some people want to see what it's like being a firefighter because they may decide to do, want to do it full time. I mean, what other job can you try it out first, um, then see if you like it? And a lot of people do like it um, and continue, even though um, they're um, working as a 
career firefighter someplace. They're still members here because, I mean, they like it. So, I mean, what other job do you do it for free and then go someplace to do, get paid and come back and do it for free again? Thanks, Dan. Can you tell us about the dim different membership categories we have? Sure, Dan. Um, first of all, <clears throat> the main um, category is a regular member. Um, when people come in, they're on probation. That's a pro 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 excuse me, probationary member. Um, they're um, on probation for um, 12 months or until they get their EMT, whatever comes later. Um, regular members are the backbone of the department. Um, a lot of people don't realize that 3 o'clock in the afternoon, Monday through Friday, the career people walk out the door, um, and it's all volunteers. It's all people just like you and me between um, 3 p.m. and 7 a.m. the next morning. And if it's a holiday or a weekend, the career people don't come back till 7 o'clock the next work day. Um, so we have regular probationary, regular members. Um, once they get off probation, they're a regular member. Then we have administrative members. These are people that um, perform very um, important duties behind the scenes. Um, a lot of people on the membership committee are um, um, administrative members. Um, they also would serve like as the secretary or the treasurer. Um, those people can be riding members, but um, that's one um, aspect that they can help out where they don't have to ride fire trucks. Um, in terms of administrative members, uh, we found that um, they were kind of getting lost in the shuffle a little bit. So we, when they got voted in, if they weren't given a specific task to do. So what we've started doing is having administrative members also do duty crews, which is um, an assigned shift um, seven days a week from 7 p.m. to um, 11 p.m. Even though the seven days a week, you only have to do one a week. Um, but the administrative members come here and are part of that duty crew and help out. And they feel more like they're more part of the team. and. Um, it also helps them get their LOSAP points, LOSAP length of service award program. That's um, when you get, tw you have to get 50 points a year, but if you do 25 points for 50 years and you're 55 years old, you get a small pension. Um, we also have um, life members, which I am. Um, if you've been here for um, 25 years, become a life member. And then we have uh, honorary members and honorary life members. I think we got it all, didn't we, Dan? I think we sure did. And uh, in addition to that, if you live inside the city of Laurel and you provide service to, to public safety services in the city of Laurel, you also may be eligible for a tax discount as well in your property taxes. Dan, if someone's interested in joining our, our volunteer fire department up here in Laurel, what should they do? Well, first of all, getting back to the tax benefits, everybody, no matter where you live, is um, eligible after three years of accredited service for a um, state tax deduction, which um, I believe it's between four and four, 4,500, 4,000, 4,500, I'm not sure of the exact amount. But um, when you file your state income tax returns, that saves you about $400. Um, if you're interested in joining, go to www.laurelbfd.org and click the uh, membership um, tab. I believe it says suit up. But um, just click that, fill out the information, and we'll get back to you and invite you to one of our monthly orientations. Generally, the second Sunday of the month at 7 p.m., but that switches around, so we definitely want you to go to the website to sign up. That way, we also have a record of you in our computer system. Dan, it certainly is an honor having you here with us today. And thank you so much for, for being involved with us in the cable show and for helping get the message out to the, to the uh, community. And thanks so much for your services to our community. Thank you. If you remember this segment we used to do, if I can do it, you can do it, so can you. Be part of the team. Thank you. Well, Dan, thank you for all that information. Um, that was Dan saying all the time when we would do a cable show, if I can do it, you can do it. And that's, that's a true statement. And, and one of the reasons why I asked uh, Maya to come in today is because Maya came up through the ranks through here through, as a volunteer and then she got real interested in the volunteer fire department and she got interested in the fire department seriously and she became a career firefighter with the Baltimore City Fire Department. Uh, I can remember when Maya got the job she also applied for Howard County where I worked for a number of years and uh, I tried to talk her into coming to Howard County but she was honest with the Baltimore City said no they offered her the job first and she thought it was only fair to go there and she made the right choice, and, and today she's, a, like I said, she's a battalion chief and a, a big city fire department. And a lot of the guys and women can only dream about doing that, and she's living the dream. Uh, and like I said, Maya came here 
uh, when I joined the fire department, I grew up in the fire department as, as a kid. My father was a member here at Laurel for back in the early 50s, and then he moved to Savage and became chief over there. And I grew up in Savage, and like I said, I spent a lot of time at the firehouse. Uh, there's an engine somewhere around that I rode it when I was like seven years old from the firehouse to home. Um, and it probably still got the hand grips on the back of where I squeezed it and if I wouldn't fall off. But it, it was a good feeling. Uh, I joined the fire service because my dad was in the fire service. My older brother was in the fire service. And that was just one of the things I, I wanted to do. But to be honest, the first thing when I was in junior high school, I always wanted to be a truck driver. You know, I thought that was cool too. You get to go places and see things. And then once I joined the fire department, I couldn't wait till I was 16 to join. And when I did, that just totally changed my whole perspective of what I wanted to do. I know I wanted to be a fireman. So that's what I did. I ended up working in the career service for 35 years. I retired as a battalion chief. I got 48 years here as a volunteer at Laurel. Um, I set two goals for myself when I joined this department as far as membership. I wanted to be a life member and I want to be chief, and I, I serve both of those. And I'm still active today. I don't ride the apparatus anymore. Like Dan said earlier, it's like going from zero to 100 in a matter of seconds. You know, when that bell goes off, it's, it's like opening up the door and let the horse out, because that's the way you got to go. You got to roll. Because people depend on us to be able to get out and take care of their problems. But like I said, I, I got to say, like Dan saying, if, if we can do it, you can do it. And we would love to have you come in and join this department. It's a great organization. Uh, and again, like I said, I asked Maya to come here. Her whole family's in it as well. Uh, I had the opportunity when I was chief to work with her dad. Her dad was the president of the department. He's now vice president of the department. So her mom is uh, big in the ladies' auxiliary. So she was in there with the family as well. So I'm happy to say... Maya, thanks for coming to the show. Um, if you can just give a little history about yourself of how you got started here at Laurel, where you came up through the ranks, and then now you're a mama too and have little girls and all that stuff, and they're going to be involved in the fire department too if you and Adam got anything to do with it. And again, some of the marriages here were met at this place. She met her husband here as well as a few other of our members the same way. Uh, my wife I met in the fire department because her family, whole family was in the fire department from her grandfather down to her father and uncles and everything else. And she was a firehouse baby as well as I was, and that's how we got together. And uh, that's why we're still together today after 44 years. So, Maya, thanks for coming. I appreciate you showing up. Thanks for having me. It means a lot. It's great to come back. Uh, always familiar faces when I come back and always a smile, so that's really nice. Um, so I started because of something my dad told me. Uh, when I was in college. My parents were both involved in the fire department. My dad volunteered as a regular member, which means he rode the fire engine. And my mom volunteered in the ladies' auxiliary. So she was always cooking and taking care of things to um, do some fundraising for the regular members so that they could get the things that they need, like apparatus and all that. Um, and that's Usually the side that I would see is the stuff that my mom did. So I would help her in the kitchen, and I did almost all of my community service hours when I was in middle school through the, the ladies' auxiliary and helping with that. And it wasn't until I was starting college when my dad said, did you ever think about joining as a regular member? Not necessarily the ladies' auxiliary part, but actually riding the apparatus. And I'd never thought of it until he'd mentioned it to me. Um, and I was in college. I had just started, and I had to work through college, so I didn't have time to do extracurricular activities like I wanted to on a, on a set schedule. I could do things on my own schedule, and that's why it was so nice to be here because, yeah, you have one night a week. It's only four hours. It's only one night a week, but you can come and go a whole lot of other times. And if there's a training you can make, you go to it. But if you can't, it's okay. So you do your one night a week, but there's other stuff you can do. I would sit at the kitchen table and do my college homework all the time. There was a computer here that I didn't have the money for. So I used the computers at school or I used the computer here. So that was really convenient. And that experience introduced me to the fire department and introduced me to a ton of people that were so encouraging and said, you know, you could do this for a career. You're strong enough. You're smart enough. You could 
do this for a living. And if it weren't for having gone through it here, I would have never thought of it. And now that I got a chance to do that, um, you know, the rest is history, as they say. But it, it was really just a turning point for me as a person to volunteer here. And that directed the rest of my professional career. Very good, Maya. Have you thought about how many people you have impacted by your services to the community, both here in Laurel Volunteer Fire Department and also with your career job? Uh, not really. <laughs> it's a, I imagine it's a lot. Um, I imagine that the number is a lot, but there's certainly um, quality aspects of the impact too. So there's little things that you don't realize make a difference. Like uh, there's there's the the high acuity, the very injured people, that kind of stuff kind of stands out. And there there are those, you know. But then there's also the little stuff that you do. I, I did the membership committee here, and that impacted people. There were people that that said, "Oh, you did my interview," and I say. I don't remember doing that. And and I had the chance to work at the fire academy in the city, and there's people that say, oh, I remember you taught my class such and such, and I've, I don't really remember you, but you know, you impact people all the time and you don't even realize it. Um, we also did things like fire prevention. I did Dottie, the fire safety dog, you know, spoiler alert, there's a, you know, there's somebody is Dottie. But, I did that, and there's people that don't even realize that it was me some of those times. I just walked through the hall upstairs, and there's a picture up there, and I said, that's me in that suit, <laughs> in that picture, because it was in 2002. So there's, there's stuff like that, too. And, you know, kids see that, and maybe they get a, a message about fire safety that day, and it impacts them later in their life, and they don't really even know that it's you. So it's, it's, not, just the, it's not just the typical stuff where you think, like, okay, you're, you are going to see people on their very worst day ever, and they're going to be so excited to see you and you are going to do awesome things to help them but there's other things you know the the little stuff the fire prevention stuff that you don't even realize that makes a big difference too thanks so much Maya and Maya shares a personality trait that many of the volunteers have they get involved they get the training they become more involved with the fire department and interact with the community and don't really think to themselves how many people they impact which is part of the miracle of providing a volunteer service. To you, you think, well, all right, I did it because I do it and I enjoy doing it and it makes me feel good. But to the people that you're serving, it, it really makes a life difference to them, uh, especially when you're providing medical service or, or helping save their property, their home. Uh, so I really appreciate you. Thank you so much for sharing your day with us today. Again, my I thank you for coming out today. I know you're you're a busy lady, uh, especially now you've got a family and all to take care of. Uh, but you do bring out some good things. You know, people see and you know I do the cable show here, and I also do one for the city. And people will stop and say, "I, I see you on TV," or you know, you go out to a restaurant. Hey, I seen you talk about smoke detectors uh, and the fire service. You know, uh, one thing that uh, Chief Thomas Bolton, who was the first fire chief when I joined told me one thing and I never forgot it in my career or as a volunteer, if you know something, don't be afraid to show somebody else. And I've had people call me and say, you know, I never did get a chance to tell you, but thank you for everything you did for me. I got promoted because of what direction you gave me. Or, hey, uh, Justin, the guy used to be here, went down on the county, he just one day called me out of the blue and said, you know what, Kat, I never did get a chance to thank you. Now I'm retired, but I just want to say, hey, thanks for everything you did for me. And we touch a lot of lives upstairs with people. And we, we train a lot upstairs, and, and it's a good thing. It's, it's a family environment here, and that's what we're trying to get. And we want to make it fun. But like Dan said, you know, sometimes people go, well, if people are running out of burning buildings, why are you running in? That's what we do. The four of us sitting right here, it takes a different breed of people to do this job. Like Dan said, you start from zero to 100 in a matter of seconds. And over the years, one of the things that you just, as a volunteer, you just have to commit your time. The volunteer fire service will take care of everything else. They'll pay for all your training. You get all your protective gear. And like Dan said, you get at the end, you get what they call a little low sap thing. And once you get 25 years and then you reach a certain age of 55, you get a little stipend at the end there, you know, a little a couple of dollars a month. But it all pans out. And the biggest thing is, is 
what you get from doing this job. Like Maya said, when, you know, people call you at their worst time of need. And when you're there to help them, you can see the expressions on their face when, oh, man, somebody showed up, somebody's taking care of my kids, somebody's helped my dad, or, hey, they're going to put this fire out. And that means a lot to people. And that's what we get pride from. And, they, and that's, and if you want to be in the fire service and even in the career fire service, like I said, I've been in the career fire service for 35 years. You're not going to get rich being a fireman, I can tell you that. But you get out of satisfaction when you assist a mother with the delivery of a child or you help an injured child or you save an older person. You're given, you know, you got the compassion for this job. You just can't come in and be a volunteer. That's why we like for you to come in when we have recruitment that we can show you the, around the fire station. We can show you the items that we have that we use, uh, get you in a, and maybe it's doing a ride along and see what kind of calls we run because it takes a different breed of people to do this. You know, like I said, you see people at their worst times. And Dan is really big on the membership, and I know, I think you have a, a chart or something you want us to show us about doing recruitment. Don't you do that so many often that the county does a thing that they advertise for weekends or something like that? Got a poster. You got a poster? Yeah. Can we see that so they can just look at it and... Now for our safety tip for this month, uh, Lieutenant Sheffield is going to talk a little bit about heat-related emergencies. So it's that time of the year, some precautions that you can take to protect yourself from the hot weather. Thanks, Cap. I wanted to talk for a few minutes about heat-related illnesses, and there's a couple different categories. There's heat stroke, which is the most urgent, heat exhaustion, heat cramps, sunburn, and heat rash. And we'll start off with uh, heat rash. Heat rash is, according to the CDC, it's uh, red clusters of small blisters that look like pimples on the skin, usually on the neck, chest, groin, and elbow creases. And to treat that, stay in cool, dry places, keep the rash dry, and use powder like a baby powder to soothe the rash. Sunburn is painful, it's red, and it's, it, it's warm to the skin. It can also cause blisters to the skin. And the recommendation on what to do with sunburn is to stay out of the sun until your sunburn heals. Put cool cloths on sunburned areas and take a cool bath. Put moisturizing lotion on sunburned areas and do not break the blisters. For heat cramps, uh, heavy sweating during intense exercise, muscle pain, and muscle spasms. And to treat that, stop physical activity and move to a cool place. Drink water or a sports drink and wait for the cramps to go away before you do more physical activity. Get medical help right away if the cramps last longer than one hour, you're, in, you're, you're, a, you're on a low sodium diet, and you have heart problems. Heat exhaustion, heavy sweating, cool, pale, uh, clammy skin, fast, weak pulse, nausea or vomiting, muscle cramps, tiredness or weakness, dizziness, headache, fainting, so if the person passes out, and what to do with heat exhaustion, move to a cool place. Loosen your clothes, put cool wet cloths on your body and take a cool bath and sip water. And get medical help right away if you're throwing up, if your symptoms get worse, and if your symptoms last longer than one hour. And heat stroke is the most critical. It's a high body temperature, 103 degrees or higher, hot, red, dry, or damp skin, fast, strong pulse, headache, dizziness, nausea, confusion, and losing consciousness so the person passes out. Call 911 right away. A heat stroke is a medical emergency. Move the person to a cooler place. Help lower the person's temperature with cool cloths or a cool bath. And do not give the person anything to drink. In addition to high body temperatures, the symptoms of heat stroke include altered mental state of behavior, nausea and vomiting, a flushed skin, rapid breathing, and rapid heart rate. Generally, with heat exhaustion, a patient is sweating a lot, whereas with heat stroke, they've stopped sweating and are actually dry. Call 911 right away. A heat stroke is a medical emergency. Thanks, Kat. Thanks, Dan, for that. Uh, and also, you know, we, we talk about our pets. Please do not leave your pets in the car with the windows up when you go into the store. Um, if you have a dog that stays outside, just make sure they have plenty of water and they have shade that they can go to. You know, 
pets are like family members. You want to make sure you take care of them as well. Well, I, I'd like to thank everybody who came out today. Maya, thank you so much for coming out. I really appreciate you coming out here. Um, because just being here today to do the show, there's probably a lot of women out there that are going like, you know, this is really great that we can see somebody that comes up. I know I'm very proud of you. Uh, same thing with your husband. I've known your husband since he was a little guy. Uh, and that, that both of you are in the career service. And, and you all do a, a valuable job. And Dan, thank you. And I know you've always been an interesting person here. I've always enjoyed working with you. I had a lot of fun when you did do the cable show. Uh, we used to do, take sometimes take his hour to do a 15-minute yeah. show because we get to laugh and everything else. And uh, Dan, I want to ask you a question, um, okay. Lieutenant Dan. Okay. Just like a, <laughs> a, a Lieutenant Dan. Uh, this is your first year as, as an officer of the department. How's it been so far? Thanks, Cat. It's, it's been pretty exciting. Um, I've worked with a variety of people that come up on Saturday nights, and we've done some training together. Um, Talking with them, learning the different levels that they are, the, the, the levels that, different levels that I am, I can always learn something new from someone else. And, and I believe I have a good share of knowledge that I can share with someone else. I would run a few good calls. We haven't had any extreme calls yet, knock on wood. Uh, but we do, we are prepared. Um, we're having fun on Saturday nights. We're doing some training. Um, we keep the house clean. And we uh, check the apparatus. And oftentimes we go out and get something to eat. And, and it's been a good time on Saturday night. And uh, I think I'm enjoying uh, being an officer here with Lower Volunteer Fire Department and working with uh, Chief Piercy and the other officers here. We're having a good time. Thanks so much. All right. You heard it live from here from everybody. And again, I'll repeat what my buddy says. If I can do it, you can do it. All right. We'll see you the next time on the Laurel Fire Watch. Thank you. <laughs>